This video is an orientation to the MaxQA interface. If you've already watched the introduction to this set of videos, you'll know that our intention here is not to teach you how to operate MaxQDA, but to show you what the interface looks like. If you haven't yet watched the introduction video, we suggest you do that now before watching the rest of this video. As you read in Chapter 5, the MaxQDA interface consists of six areas. The document system is where documents are stored and can be organised. The code system is where codes are listed and can be organised. The document browser is the central area of the screen that displays open documents. The retrieve segments window displays coded segments that satisfy combinations of activated documents and codes. The main menus and toolbars provide access to functions relating to the various components. And finally, floating windows are overviews of components and functions for working with them. The purpose of this video is to show you what the MaxQDA interface looks like so that when you read on in the book and when you learn to operate the software yourself, you will be well prepared. So here we are looking at a MaxQDA project and you can see five of the main areas of the interface are visible. The document system, the code system, the document browser, which is currently showing George's transcript and the retrieve segments window, which is currently empty because nothing is activated and across the top, the main menus and their associated icons. The floating windows are not available at the moment because I haven't asked to see one. Let's first of all look at the document system. The document system is where we store documents in document groups, which are represented by these blue folder icons. We can see we've got various document groups represented here and we can access documents from those groups just by double clicking and that changes what's on view in the document browser. If we scroll down slightly we can see document sets which are shortcuts to documents and we can also access documents from document sets in the, in the, in the same way. We discuss document groups and document sets in more detail in the video about that particular component. Also visible in the document system are any memos which have been associated with document groups or documents and the number of coded segments which have been applied to each document group or each document within a group or indeed a set. Across the top of the document system are shortcut icons allowing us to ac access various functions. As we've seen, when we open a document by double clicking, that changes what we see in the document browser. Here we're looking at Kelly and we can scroll up and down and see the whole of this document and any coding which has been achieved and any memos which have been applied to parts of documents within the document browser. Again, across the top of the document browser, we have shortcut icons to access various different functions and hovering your cursor over each of those will tell you what that function will do. Sometimes it's useful to see more than one document at a time and we can do that by asking to open a separate tab in the document browser. So I'll just do that for this document here by right clicking on the document and asking to open it in a new tab. And now you'll see that I've got two tabs that I can flick between more quickly and more easily than going back to the document system. But I can also ask to see a document in a second document browser. That opens up this document in a second document browser and then I can arrange my screen so that I can see more than one document at a time. The code system stores all of our codes and you can see that we can have subcodes and that we can color groups of codes as we see fit and we can also have memos associated with codes. Creating codes is very easy, moving codes is also very easy, I can just drag and drop them and hang them where I want and they will be moved and you can see on the right hand side the coded segments that have been applied across all documents so far in this project. 
Again, shortcut icons across the top of the code system allow us access to different functions and also different visualizations. For example, I can change to the table view if I prefer to see my codes uh, as a list rather than a hierarchy. Um, or indeed, I can ask to see emoticodes uh, if I've been using those in the project. The Retrieve Segments window, which is currently empty, will be populated when I've asked to activate the documents and codes that I'm interested in. So I'll just do that very quickly. I'm going to choose to activate all of the um, coded segments related to education. Uh, I can do that just by clicking on the little button there. And then I need to choose which documents I want to focus in on. So I'm just going to choose the Indiana group. And as soon as I do that, the Retrieve Segments uh, window uh, is populated with the combination of those two activations. So all of the coded segments at the education code, but only amongst the Indiana documents. I can see down at the bottom here in my status bar that I've got four coded segments there. So four of the 16 segments coded at education occur in either Kelly or Grace, the Indiana group. Opening up floating windows offers me many ways of visualising data. I'll just show you a couple. If I right click on a code, then I can ask to generate an overview of all kinds of different components. I'll just choose the overview of coded segments for now. And I have got all of the 16 coded segments for education uh, in this list. And if I choose one at a time, Max QDA will navigate around showing me not only the coded segment in the panel above, but also in the context in the background in the document browser. You'll notice that we're looking at 16 coded segments here, which is the whole 16 that are applied here. So generating overviews is not affected by the activation. There are a whole host of other floating windows that are generated. When we ask to start an interrogation, for example, we'll usually get a floating window. So I'll just start the keyword in context one here, and you'll see that I get a floating window with the dialog box for that interrogation. I'm not going to show you that now because I'm going to finish up this video just talking a little bit about the main menu items. You can see we've got main menus across the top, which allow us to access various different functions based on the components and also different types of interrogations. So mixed methods, visual tools, reports, stats and Max Dictio are different types of interrogations that we can run. As you start to use Max QDA, you'll become more and more familiar with the different shortcut icons that open up different tools. Here, for example, is the Max Maps shortcut icon. So when I click on there, then again, I get a floating window with that feature available to me. The last thing I'm going to show you is that you can reorientate the interface by asking for a different layout. So here I'm in the layout manager, which I access from this little icon here. Uh, and you can see that I can choose a different layout depending on my personal preferences. It's also useful to get familiar with right clicking in order to access various functions. Right clicking will normally show you the different actions that can be taken on the component that you've right clicked on. And right clicking in different areas gives you different actions. So become familiar with right clicking as well as using the shortcut icons and the main menus.